So we're finishing up with my Mindfulness in the Brain course for this semester. And one of our last topics is the effects of silence on the brain. And I want to do a short video on this because it's not very intuitive. Um, if you look this up, you'll find a very interesting uh, article about um, Finland trying to market itself as a country to attract visitors. And after a long list of potential things, they realized that silence was one of their most attracting features of the country. Because after the Industrial Revolution, we're so surrounded with machines. So even right now, as I start this video, I mean, someone's mowing their grass, and there's a car in the distance, and I can hear my computer. And, uh, you know, this is such a different environment than what we evolved in. For hundreds of thousands of years, we were, you know, there were no machines, and there may be the occasional storm, but for the most part, we were subjected to a very quiet world that's become very noisy. In fact, even in, I think it was the 60s, I mean, uh, things got so noisy that they, they created the phrase noise pollution. And the thing about it is, is that we don't recognize it. And so one of the things about the nervous system is it it's very quickly engages in something called habituation. So if there's a noise out there, but it doesn't change, we get used to it. But the real question is, do we really get used to it? And so, uh, like for my morning jog, I uh, would have sworn, if I was taking a questionnaire, I would say, oh, it's so peaceful and quiet on my jog. But this morning, I was very much more mindful of the noise pollution. And it turns out, actually, there was only a few moments of actual quiet. In fact, most of the jog was surrounded by machines and cars and trucks. And, and even though there, there weren't very many of them, it was still enough that it was a continuous background noise. So the research uh, is from silence in the brain actually is, is, is mostly by accident. So they usually include silent conditions as a control condition. So if you're doing an experiment, you need some kind of baseline or comparison. And um, so um, one very interesting research um, by Bernardi, this is I think 2006, and he was looking at the effects of music on physiology. So he had all kinds of like blood pressure and physiological uh, variables being measured as people would listen to different types of music. But he also had a condition where people would be in silence for two minutes. And the really interesting thing, and I guess this got downloaded by a lot of um, uh, uh, people interested in the effects of in cardiovascular disease, because it was actually the silent condition resulted in a greater relaxation response than the relaxing music. And so it's a very surprising finding that silence would have such a such a profound effect. Now, again, one of the more obvious reasons is that our nervous system is wired. So you know, if it detects something, and then it later identifies it. But at first, it just you know, is there something or nothing? And just the detection of something could um, uh, invoke that fight or flight response. And that so again, the having absolute silence kind of gives the nervous system a break and a chance to respond, uh, relax. And as I said in my other video, that, that uh, parasympathetic uh, relax and digest response. In another study looking at rats, they had a longer uh, condition where some of the rats, uh, there was maybe mice, but they were in, a, in a, a silent condition for about two hours. And this is a really interesting effect because they were looking at, they were able to directly look at the brain. And the mice in this condition, so they got two hours a day of silence, had um, really something that if you go back in the 90s, I mean, people would never even, I mean, it was, no one talked about this thing called neurogenesis. That's this idea that the processing cells of the brain, the neurons, can actually, uh, we can grow new neurons. But it turns out in the, in the absolute silence, these mice were able to grow new neurons in their hippocampus, that part of the brain responsible for forming new memories and storing them. And so it's a pretty important part of the brain, but just the fact that it, it resulted in the brain's capacity to regenerate neurons was really important, particularly um, when you look at um, the hippocampus in, in states like dementia and even depression, it seems to, um, this, this ability seems to be inhibited. And so silence could be a really interesting meditation in and of itself. So my students had a, a project where they had to find the silence. And so this might be more difficult than you think. I know, because I'm trying it myself. Um, 
Like right now, I'd say, yeah, this is really quiet. But again, I can hear people cutting their grass and um, I can my computer, I have such a loud computer, you know? And so um, it'd be an interesting thing. I'm gonna try to find, this is gonna be my uh, project for the weekends. Can I find some actual silence in a very noisy world? And um, it might be harder for some of you, especially if you're in the city, it might be really difficult. But the effects, again, just to throw out one more really interesting study, when airports would relocate, um, and imagine how noisy an airport would, if you're, if, if you're close to an airport. And so they looked at all the kind of cognitive measurements on children's performance, uh, both before an airport um, left and then after it left, or in other places if it moved in, and it looked really clear that just having that airport had a decline in their cognitive performance in kids. Now again, this could be that, like sleep, sometimes the brain just needs a break from external input. Um, or it could be even something a little bit more, I don't know, existential or zen-like. So, you know, that, that, that experience of nothingness. Um, uh, take consciousness and you, and you focus on nothing for a while. And it's sort of like, um, like uh, Ramana uh, Maharshi when he would talk about, you know, there's nothing but consciousness. And uh, he would talk about how, um, you know, when, consciousness without any objects uh, that the, that experience that there is nothing but consciousness would be more profound and maybe the silence gives us a chance to experience consciousness without any content I mean I don't know I'd uh, enjoy hearing your thoughts if you want to drop a line and let me know oh, and see if you can experience a little bit of actual silence and see how that affects uh, not just your brain but your consciousness itself